is presented by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. And in part by State Farm. Find your agent at statefarm.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back into First Take. We're back, and this guy's here from the city of brotherly love. What's the good word? I'm in the house. Yeah. I, I apologize for my tardiness, but Skip, I swear to you, it was not my fault. I stood still, parked on 295, coming from Jersey to Philadelphia because of some accident or whatever. But I am in the house. I'm here. I'm ready to go. And I heard your comment about my looks. I really, you know, I like Bob Stoops. I yeah. really do respect the man. But I'm not going to admit the, br the brother looks better than me. I, I'm I not don't know. It's a, it's a close call, but I'm going Coach Stoops. Right. I, I think, man, I don't know. Go. But here's my question well, to you, your Stephen opinion, A. Smith. Luckily, your opinion about my looks does not matter. That, that's true. It doesn't matter. But the point right. is, the question is, how could Stephen A. Smith get in a traffic jam in a city for which he is the mayor, the city of Philadelphia, Where's your police escort? I thought you always had a police escort yeah, to the show. Yeah, your chopper, be, 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 Kobe style. Because because it was because it was Jersey coming to Philly. Once oh, I hit the so Philadelphia limits, thing. I had no problem. Uh, I had no problem. Okay. Too many cities. I'm glad you're here. This guy's all, right. all over. Well, yes, we're glad yes, you're here. We're yeah. glad you're safe. That's that's what matters here. Let's Thanks get so into much. it, gentlemen. Let's roll. All right, Mike Sandoz, NFL quarterback tier rankings are hot off the press. We want to focus in on tier one. Sitting at number three is Andrew Luck. Now, mixed reviews on this ranking. The supporters, listen to this, are comparing him to some of the greatest athletes of all time. One anonymous GM said, you want to talk about a guy who makes the team he is Michael Jordan. Their defense sucks. Every game he has to outscore everybody. He's the epitome of a one. If I was to draft tomorrow any player in the NFL, it would be Andrew Luck one, Aaron Rodgers two. Now the voters who placed Luck in the second tier said he needs to protect the football better, has underwhelming postseason success, and is playing in a weak division. Stephen A., where do you rank Andrew Luck? Well, listen, I, I'm not going to put him above Brady, obviously. Um, I'm certainly not going to put him against that bad man, Aaron Rodgers. I think he's a step below that, but I, but I think he's tugging away at number three. I think age and attrition have kicked in with the great uh, Peyton Manning. As great as I think Drew Brees is, I think that he's prone to mistakes just like Andrew Luck has been. The difference is he's been in the league considerably longer, so there's less of an excuse for it as opposed to Andrew Luck. In three seasons that Andrew Luck has been in this league last year, he led the league with 40 touchdown passes. Now, he was responsible for 22 of their 31 takeaways, and that certainly not is not impressive. But the Colts still averaged 28.6 points per game, if I remember correctly, which was like sixth in the entire NFL. When you consider the fact that he's responsible for 22 of their 31 takeaways, imagine what they could have done if those takeaways didn't take place. But it's primarily due to the 100 sacks he's received over the last three years because the Indianapolis Colts have been ill-equipped to protect him. So he's been basically on suicide watch behind that offensive line, dropping back to pass with little to no protection whatsoever, still winning division titles, still getting them to the playoffs, and every single year they've progressed. They went to the wild card the first year. They won a divisional playoff game the next year. They went to the AFC Championship game last year. And these are his first three years in the league. So I look at it, all of that, all of that that I look at. I look at his body of work, but I also look at his physicality, those treats trunks for legs that he has, the durability that he's able that he's been able to exude. And I combine that particularly with the offense that he's going to have in place now. The addition of Frank Gore, the addition of Andre Johnson, joining a T.Y. Hilton, joining a Kobe Fleener, Dwayne Allen and those boys. I like what I'm seeing. I think the sky's the limit for him. And you know from day one, Skip, I've always been more about Andrew Luck than I have been about RG3. And obviously, at this particular moment in time, I look absolutely prophetic. Clearly has something to do with RG3's health yeah, because his rookie you. year, he was big time, and we know that he got hurt. But in the end, you look at Andrew Luck. Don't talk to me about this brother not being big time. He's big time. So was RG3 as a rookie, and I, we're going to get to that in just a moment here. But just for the record, RG3, the guy I liked going into that draft, outplayed Andrew Luck when they were both rookies. Mm. Now, back to your issue here. You and I have gone back and forth about this for about three years. 
I have never said Andrew Luck would be a bust. I've only said that I resent, that I am skeptical of the premature coronation of Andrew Luck. It seems like everybody has whisked him into a first ballot Hall of Fame status before he has proven it on the football field when it matters most in the postseason. And I appreciated the fact, I was shocked by the fact, that five of the NFL people interviewed by Mike Sando for these rankings, not two or three, five said, hold the phone, stop the presses. Andrew Luck is not a top tier quarterback, not yet. They call him a one. He's not a one just yet. Five people interviewed by Sando said he's a two. And a quick quote from one of them, it's almost like we're giving him the benefit of the doubt already. That's what I keep trying to tell you. I just need him to back it up. I don't doubt well, that well, he can, well. but, but let me finish. Let me finish. He is now three sure. and three. Is Andrew Luck three and three in the postseason? And the last playoff game we saw him play, obviously in Foxborough, most of the attention focused on the Deflate Gate team, the home team, the Patriots, who obviously went on to win the Super Bowl. It was a complete wipeout for Andrew Luck's team. And Andrew Luck wiped out in that game. He went 12 for 33 for 126 yards and zero touchdowns for a QBR, Stephen A. Smith, on the scale of 1 to 100, of 29. Just a week earlier, in the same stadium, Joe Flacco, who I sometimes call Joe Fluco on this show, went crazy on that same Patriot defense. Flacco, same field, playoff game, high stakes, week before. Flacco goes 28 of 45, four touchdowns and a QBR of 84. 84 to 29 for Andrew Luck. Now, is this the end of the world for Andrew Luck? No, but you've got to show me a little more than this in the postseason where his total QBR is only 65. It's a little better than average, well, but it's not great. I'm sorry I haven't seen enough yet, and, and I'm going to let you talk for a second because I got a lot more ammo here. <laughs> no, no, well, 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 well I just, I, I, it's not so much talking. I needed to ask you a question in all seriousness. I needed to know your definition of the number one or exactly who qualifies as the number one. Who is it, Skip? Right now, two do. Tom Brady first. He should be. 1A and 1B is your guy Aaron Rodgers. Then we can argue okay, about well, all kinds you, of twos. There, there are a number. Of, well, I think Peyton has fallen to a two. It, it, that's what I'm yeah. saying. See, that, that's where I needed you to go. So if you want to category, categorize it that way, then we're not going to disagree. Because I agree with that. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and then there's everybody else. What I'm saying is when you get to the everybody else, yeah. Andrew Luck is right there. So when you talk to me about him being a number two, it depends on what your number two is. Okay. In this particular instance, I would agree. But let's be clear, Skip. Let's be clear. You keep bringing up what he did against the Patriots. Do you know that the Patriots averaged 47.3 points a game in the four wins against the Indianapolis Colts in the last three years? Okay. Indianapolis's defense was virtually non-existent. So if you know that you have a defense that's non-existent and you know you got to go out there and make things happen as your sole hope of beating the Patriots and you're relatively inexperienced, you're going to make mistakes. Things are going to happen. Why? Because you can't afford to be safe. You've got to go for it every time because you can't rely on your defense to come through for you. That's the reality, Skip. And I'm saying you know football. You know football too well to ignore that fact. Okay. That is what Aaron, Aaron Andrew Luck has been working against. Some GM referred to Andrew Luck as Michael Jordan. Aggressive. He, he went no, 12 for no. 33 in, this, in the AFC Championship game. Does Michael Jordan go 12 of 33 for 126 no. and no touchdowns? On the same field, Joe Fluco Flacco threw four touchdown passes against the same Patriot defense the week before. That's just bad. That, that's wrong. You can't call him Michael Jordan yet because he's not. I agree with that. Okay. Now, look at his division. I think he is, so to speak, locked into the worst division in pro football. I don't think there's any argument. So he has gone 16-2 and two against his division. He's won his last 13 games in the division. Well, every year they're going to go 11-5 and five in part because 
The division is cake for them. It's a cakewalk. They're going to cakewalk into the playoffs because they're going to beat the heck out of these, you know, out of Houston, Tennessee, and Jacksonville. It, it's, it's set up for him to, to at least get to the playoffs. So when your biggest claim to fame was that Kansas City comeback game in which you threw three interceptions that threw your team into a 41-24 to hole before the Chiefs got annihilated with injuries. They lost Jamal Charles. They lost Justin Houston. They lost Tom Bahali. And all of a sudden, they just didn't have enough star players left. And Andrew Luck led a remarkable fourth quarter comeback and they won the game yeah. 45 to 44. Is that all you got? But you threw three interceptions in that game. Well, well no, no, that, that, that's not all I got. That's not all I got. What I also have, Skip Bayless, is something that is completely different from you. You keep talking about that's his claim to fame. My claim to fame for Andrew Luck is his youth. It's the fact that he is as good as he is being so young. What you have people doing is looking at him and projecting a level of greatness because so many things come along with playing the game of football. How is it that whether it's a T-Ball or anybody else or a Johnny Manziel, you can project about the potential greatness that they could deliver in, in T-Ball's case in, in terms of results, in Johnny Manziel's case in terms of his play or whatever. But with Andrew Luck, you can't see that, look, this brother has the potential to be all-time great. Of course he's not there. Of course he shouldn't be quote-unquote coronated. But the coronation that I would argue with you about is they're not saying that he's arrived. They're saying, my God, look at this guy's potential. This dude, look at the, the Brett Favre's of the world and others, Peyton Manning, these guys are on the verge of playing 20 years in the NFL. Okay. If Indianapolis improves this offensive line, Andrew Luck may very well have 17 years to go. And in the first three, you haven't seen enough to look at this dude and say, yo, he's, he's big time. I'm because saying, I think he's yo, big show time. me more. I, I don't see enough. I, sure, I, I, I agree I'm with that. I'm to react to you. I agree with that. And, and the, the public opinion that has already placed him on the loftiest pedestal. And I'm saying, I need to see more when the money's on the line in the postseason because this but, isn't but good what, enough. But, but what's the loftiest pedestal? What's the loftiest pedestal? You're going against RG3. You've clearly eclipsed him. All right? You've got Russell Wilson there. He's been to two consecutive Super Bowls, but the Legion of Boom has a lot to do with that, even though he makes plays when they count in crunch time, and he deserves credit for that, not just with his arm, but with his feet. You've got the Colin Kaepernick's of the world who've been to a Super Bowl. Yeah, but he's not the quarterback Andrew Luck is. I think everybody would agree with that. You look at a lot of these young guys, and you're like, look, Andrew Luck is definitely near or at the top okay, of the class, and he's got loads of potential. What's the name of the game? Don't turn the football over. You already mentioned okay. it. Thank you very much. He turns the ball over way too much. It started in his rookie year, and I didn't harp on the fact he had the second most combined turnovers as a rookie in the National Football League. Peyton had a miserable rookie year. He led the NFL in interceptions. So I'm, I'm good with that, but he still turns the ball over way too much. That's got to get cleaned up. And when it comes time, you're going to have to perform at a higher level to be Michael Jordan. I, I'm just reacting to people. I have don't already, agree with that. Hey, he, he is a cinch Hall of Famer in most people's eyes already. And I'm just a He's little a skeptical. He's a cinch Hall of Famer. He's a cinch Hall of Famer because of what we believe he okay, is going to fine. do. There is nothing Hall of Fame about his numbers yet. It's good, but it's not great. But we believe what he's going to do because we see what he's working with. We see what he's working against. Combined with his youth, look at what he's done. There isn't a franchise in the NFL that if you ask them, could they take a young quarterback, would not want Andrew Luck. Okay, fine. Not one of them. I get it. I just need to see more because all I know for a fact, sure. last year Tony Romo had a better year than Andrew Luck. And you've you've laughed at Tony Romo for years on this show. That's that's a fact. Why? He was just bad. Uh, why? Because you always say he's an accident waiting skip, to happen, and he wasn't. Are last you ready year. for this, Skip? Are you ready for this, Skip? In to, in Andrew Luck's three years, he already has more playoff victories than Tony Romo in his entire career. Okay, but is that not a fact? But Tony Romo doesn't get to play Jacksonville and Tennessee and Houston every year. 
No, no, I said playoffs. Yeah, I said I know. playoffs. I yeah. said playoffs. I ain't talking regular season. I said playoffs. He already has more playoff victories than Tony Romo in Tony Romo's career. Why shouldn't I laugh at Tony Romo? Tony Romo, lucky I'm not giggling every day. You, you couldn't laugh at him last playoff year. All right, that's fine. Yeah. What about the other eight? Mm. What about the other eight years? They don't count. Thank you. All right, we talk about they, a, they count to me. Yeah. a weak division being in his favor. I also want to point out that they have the easiest strength of schedule. Only the Falcons have an easier that strength of true. schedule this year That's a than good the Colts. So that I should have brought that up, Stephen A. You know what, Mom? You know what, Mom? Thank you. Thank you. Just, you, 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 you just trying you. to help Skip. Yeah. Is, is that what it is? Yeah. Skip need help. Skip need Molly to come to the rescue. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, you got you coming to your aid. He yeah. plucked me right she's, she's, out of NFL Network. Yep, that's exactly yeah. what happened. Come on now. If you were here. No, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All let's, right. Let's okay. zoom in on another player from Mike Sando's quarterback rankings on ESPN.com. Now, remember. GMs, coaches, and other NFL personnel are pulled for these rankings. Robert Griffin III, a number two overall pick, is ranked number 28. One offensive coach said he is done. The reason why is the injury slowed his legs and his ego will not allow him to hit rock bottom and actually grind his way back up the right way. Harsh words, RG3 is done. Done. Skip, do you agree? <sighs> Stephen A., obviously, I do not agree. I remain a big RG3 fan. I maintain high hopes for his career to get back on not just track, but back on rookie year track. We just talked about it. RG3 was the rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year. RG3 threw 20 touchdown passes his rookie year to only five interceptions. RG3 led his team coached by a coach who initially didn't want RG3 in the draft. He led that team with Mike Shanahan to the NFC East crown and to a home playoff game, and I've mentioned it many times, against the Seattle Seahawks, in which RG3 led the team to a 14 to nothing lead before he once again aggravated a knee injury that turned into a disaster later in the game. Does he need to get over himself? Yes. Does he need to get over the branding of RG3? You better believe he does. But one of the GMs quoted here anonymously did say that he showed his rookie year that he could be a one, meaning top tier, where only Brady and Aaron Rodgers preside right now, reside right now. He is a young guy. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because of that. So am I. His legs have been battered, but I'm told somewhat by our Ryan Clark, who obviously was a teammate of RG3's in Washington last year, Ryan thinks that Robert is going to get 100% healthy. Robert's going to have to come off his high horse about, I can be the next Peyton Manning from the pocket, because he cannot. But combined with a few read option runs, just an occasional eight-yard bolt and slide, which he has not yet learned to do, at least to my knowledge at this moment, if he'll learn to run for a few yards and slide to keep the defense off balance, I think he could be a one again. So I am going to vehemently disagree with the notion that he is D-O-N-E. Well, I agree with you. I don't think that he's done. But Skip Bayless, he's 5-15 and 15 in his last 20 starts. Uh, he's been incredibly average. I know that you're leaning on the 68% completion percentage that he had last season. But Skip, I'm just going through the eye test here and, 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 and I will openly confess to you that as much as I watched him, as much as I have, you know, loved ones who love themselves, some yep. Washington Redskins or what have you, I, it, I will lean on you in this regard. Work with me here. The eye test that we, you and I, periodically lean on. Yep. Going through the eye test, didn't you see an RG3 look considerably conservative and safe last season? Yes. Because that's what I saw. Well, that would explain the 68% completion percentage. Yeah. Which, to me, when you've got Pierre Garçon and Jordan Reed and Deshaun Jackson with Alfred Morris behind the backfield, yep. what the hell are you doing being safe for? You know why you would be safe? Because the confidence that you're supposed to have in your skill set may not necessarily be there. Yep. So to me, even though I do not believe he is done, I do believe whether or not he's done will be answered this season. If RG3 
with the weapons that they have in the nation's capital doesn't show up to play this year, I think he's done in D.C. Yeah. I think he'll harbor second tier status for the rest of his career. And the brand that is RG3 will be no more. He'll simply be Robert Griffin. Okay. That's what he will be. That's what it comes down to me. Is it fair to give him one last benefit of the doubt? Because his new coach last year, Jay Gruden, was shockingly critical of RG3 publicly. I, it started to feel like that, that Jay Gruden had jumped off the RG3 bandwagon that he was supposed to drive back onto track feel. last year. Didn't it feel that way? Well, feel. I mean, Kirk Cousins got starts. Colt McCoy yeah. got a start. Okay. They don't feel it. It was a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> okay. So shouldn't Absolutely. we give RG3 at least a little break that he keeps falling into a rough situation with his head coach? Is that all his fault? No. No. Do you know why, Skip? Because Jay Gruden's still there. If it were a new coach that he would have to deal with, that yeah. would be different. But the fact is that same dude is coaching you this year. So you're going to have to deal with it. Deal with I mean, it. are you going to sit here, Skip? And, 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 and are you going to sit here, Skip, as the season comes forward? Are we going to sit here on this set? Mm -hmm. And when the subject of the Redskins come up, if RG3 plays like garbage, are we going to sit here and go like this? Well, you know Jay Gruden's his coach. Yeah. No, we're not. No. We're going to sit there and go like this. you got to find a way to get it done. Because i got to tell you, Skip, the nation's capital they, 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 they're, they're disgusted with him. I agree. They're disgusted with him from the perspective of, from the perspective of, they're tired of reasons and excuses and scenarios. They want to win football games. They want their Sundays to matter mm -hmm. in November and December. They don't want to hear about Jay Gruden and all of that stuff about RG3's performance. They expect RG3 to step up yep. and get it done. I agree with you. I'm sure a lot of those fans, a lot of your relatives, are already done with RG3. But remember, I guess it was the owner, Dan Snyder, or the GM, Bruce Allen, or a combination thereof. They did pick up his option, which was a little surprising to both of us. I thought they were going to just ship him right on out and try to start fresh. And I was happy that Robert might get a fresh start elsewhere. But now, this is it for him. He's going to have to make the most of a coach who's not his biggest fan, and hope that obviously the owner's in his corner, the GM's in his corner, and I, it felt like he started losing some of the team last year, though Ryan Clark says, no, that's not the case. So it, this is a big year for Robert. It's sink or swim in D.C. No question. Yeah. All right, no well, question. You can check out the full article on ESPN.com. It's a great read, and I also want to mention that uh, Marcus Mariota was at 25, Jameis Winston at 26, obviously both rookies unproven ahead of RG3. <laughs> We're going to discuss uh, one of those guys mm. later in the show. Our next guest is a proven winner. He is coming off an 11-win season in 2014, and his Horn Frogs are once again title contenders this season. TCU head coach Gary Patterson is here. Coach. I have the right color on, Coach. Welcome. You do. <laughs> we'll talk to you after the break. Welcome.